For centuries, royal bloodlines were regarded as one of the sacred and inviolable foundations of political authority in Europe. Genealogies preserved in royal archives, family trees extending across hundreds of years, and records kept by clerics all contributed to maintaining the notion that the blood of kings formed an unbroken, predestined continuum. Yet history is sometimes rewritten not by historians, but by the silent DNA molecules preserved within human bones. The story of two monarchs, Edward III and Richard III, stands as a rare testament to the power of science to verify, refine, and at times challenge what we have long accepted as truth. In 2012, when archaeologists from the University of Leicester began a small excavation beneath the Greyfriars car park, few believed the site could hold the key to one of England's greatest historical mysteries. Yet only a few weeks later, they uncovered the remains of a male skeleton bearing signs of violent trauma and a pronounced spinal curvature features strikingly consistent with descriptions found in numerous historical sources about Richard III, the last king of the House of Plantagenet, who died at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485. This excavation marked the starting point of one of the most significant interdisciplinary investigations of the 21st century, combining archaeology, history, and genetics to reconstruct the portrait and lineage of a monarch lost for more than half a millennium. To confirm the identity of the remains, the researchers employed mitochondrial DNA, mpDNA, a form of DNA passed exclusively from mother to offspring and known for its minimal variation over time. This allowed them to compare the mtDNA from the skeleton with that of living descendants of Anne of York, sister of Richard III. The results showed an almost perfect match with a statistically negligible probability of random coincidence. With this, the scientific community gained strong confirmation that the remains indeed belonged to Richard III. The mtDNA analysis served as the initial step, reinforcing the notion that science can help fill the gaps left by history. Yet the truly startling discovery emerged in the next phase, the phase aimed at testing the integrity of the Plantagenet paternal bloodline. To test the continuity of the paternal lineage, scientists rely on the Y chromosome, which is transmitted exclusively from father to son and remains largely unchanged across generations. According to historical genealogy, Richard III was a direct male line descendant of Edward III through his son Edmund of Langley, Duke of York. This implies that if the genealogy is accurate, the Y chromosome of Richard III should match that of modern male line descendants of Edward III. To verify this, the research team collected DNA from descendants of the Somerset line, who are documented as having an unbroken male line descent from John of Gaunt, another son of Edward III. Although the York and Lancaster branches diverge through different sons, both lineages should nevertheless carry the characteristic genetic signatures of the Plantagenet male lineage. However, when the analytical results were published, all prior assumptions were immediately overturned. Y chromosome analysis revealed that Richard III belonged to haplogroup GP287, a rare Y chromosome lineage in the modern British population, but one that occurs at higher frequencies in the Caucasus and the Middle East. This result was entirely incompatible with haplogroup R1BU152, the characteristic Y lineage identified in the Somerset descendants, who were regarded as representatives of the male line descendants of Edward III. The absolute genetic divergence between GP287 and R1BU152, which split from one another tens of thousands of years ago, constitutes irreversible genetic evidence for a break in the paternal line at some point within the Plantagenet genealogy. In addition, this discrepancy leads to only one possible conclusion. At some point across the approximately 19 generations from Edward III to the present, a false paternity event must have occurred, that is, an individual recorded in the official genealogy was not the biological father of the subsequent generation. Although the concept of an FPE can evoke associations with moral misconduct, in genetics it simply describes a natural occurrence within human pedigrees. Such events may arise from a range of circumstances including adoption, misattributed paternity, step-parenting, extramarital relationships, or even the complex social and legal situations of the medieval world. The estimated historical FPE rate in Europe ranges from about 1-2% per generation, not high, but certainly not rare. 
However, when an FPE occurs within a lineage whose authority depends on the perceived purity of its bloodline, the scientific and historical implications become particularly noteworthy. The discovery of a Y chromosome break within the Plantagenet genealogy immediately redirected historical attention to a figure who had already been the subject of controversy for centuries. Richard of Conisberg, 1300, and 75,415, the great-grandfather of Richard III. Even before the application of genetics to historical research, a number of historians had already suspected that Richard of Conisberg might not have been the biological son of Edmund of Langley, the fourth son of Edward III. These suspicions were not based on speculative conjecture, but rather on a series of notable irregularities in medieval sources. First, in the official will of Edmund of Langley, Richard of Conisberg is not mentioned as an heir, an omission that is highly unusual for a legitimate royal son. Second, throughout his youth, Richard did not receive lands, financial endowments, or political status commensurate with royal birth, standing in stark contrast to his acknowledged siblings. Third, several contemporary records and modern historical analyses document an unusually close relationship between Isabella of Castile, Richard's mother, and John Holland, Duke of Exeter, the maternal half-brother of King Richard II. John Holland has long been proposed by some scholars as a potential biological alternative to Edmund of Langley as Richard of Conisberg's father, although no direct, definitive evidence has ever been established. History cannot provide absolute proof. But when genetic data from Richard III are considered alongside long-standing historiographical doubts, the likelihood of an FPE occurring in the generation of Richard of Conisberg becomes increasingly compelling. If Richard of Conisberg was indeed not the biological son of Edmund of Langley, then this would be the precise point at which the Plantagenet paternal line was broken. Such an interruption perfectly explains the mismatch between Richard III's Y chromosome and that of the modern male line descendants of Edward III. However, it is important to emphasize a key scientific point. The DNA results do not indicate when or in whom the FPE occurred, nor do they suggest that Richard III was not the biological son of his recorded father. An FPE could have taken place many generations before Richard III, or even within the Somerset descendant line. The genetic data tell us only that the Y chromosome line is discontinuous. The reasons for this break and the identities of the individuals involved remain beyond the reach of current scientific inference. Although it does not pinpoint specific details, the discovery of an FPE has sparked substantial debate about the meaning of legitimacy within royal history. Yet. When viewed in the context of the medieval world, it becomes clear that political authority was not grounded in biology, but in political recognition. Dynasties were sustained not by DNA molecules, but by military victories, noble support, strategic marriages, and the backing of the church. For this reason, the FPE has no practical impact on the historical line of succession and does not affect the standing of later dynasties, including the present-day House of Windsor, this new genetic discovery must be understood within the broader context of ancient DNA, the research. Over the past decade, ADNA studies in Europe have illuminated population origins, prehistoric migrations, and genetic events unrecorded in written history. The analysis of DNA from Richard III's remains not only confirmed his identity, but also provided additional insights into his health, diet, and even physical appearance. For example, Richard III's scoliosis, often exaggerated by Tudor narratives to tarnish his reputation, was verified through examination of his spine, revealing a progressive form of the condition that did not impair his ability to fight. This contributes to a more accurate portrait of a king who has often been portrayed negatively in traditional historiography. From this perspective, Richard III emerges as a complex figure a genuine warrior bearing fatal wounds consistent with accounts of his death in battle, a king whose image was distorted by Tudor propaganda, and now the focal point of a significant genetic discovery with the potential to reshape our understanding of royal bloodlines. Interestingly, the FPE finding does not make Richard III less royal. Rather, it demonstrates that the notion of a pure bloodline has always been far more complicated than commonly assumed. 
When viewed in its entirety, the story of Edward III and Richard III demonstrates that history and science are not opposing forces, but complementary ones. While history records what people sought to preserve, genetics reveals what the human body has carried across centuries. The discovery of an FPE within the Plantagenet lineage does not undermine history. It makes it more authentic, freeing it from medieval assumptions and bringing us closer to the real individuals behind the royal symbols. In the end, the most important lesson from this research does not lie in re-examining the question of who fathered whom, but in recognizing that lineage is not the same as history. History is shaped by wars, treaties, loyalties, fears, ambitions, and countless other social forces. DNA is merely one of many fragments that help complete the larger picture. In the case of Edward III and Richard III, science demonstrates that even royal genealogies long assumed to be infallible can contain ambiguities. And it is precisely these ambiguities that make history more vivid, more human, and more worthy of study than ever.